Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm the inspirational Andy Murray from What Culture. And remember, two in the bush is worth one in the push. <laughs> Coming up, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I've got three new matches to tell you about at SummerSlam. <laughs> Screw the Titanic, I prefer newer ships. And the Royal Reunion got a great viewership. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I've had my tea. I've got some news about a potential new member of the OC. California, not that one. <laughs> Professional wrestling may never have a trade union, so here's Sami Zayn shooting on the Raw reunion. I would love Matt Riddle to call me bro. And I've got some news about a new WWE FS1 show. This is the news. SummerSlam matches, updates, big stories. First one, Trish Stratus may be wrestling what? on August 11th. So, the event takes place in her hometown, Toronto. I almost said Toronto, California there. That'd be wrong. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Big show, big match, big opponent needed potentially for Charlotte Flair. Um, so basically pro wrestling sheet with the first debate the news that Trish was likely to wrestle at SummerSlam last night. They published a nice little report on their website. Ryan Satin has a track record. There's no reason not to believe him at this moment. Um, Obviously, that'd be a huge get for, for WWE. Trish is a big part of the company's women's wrestling history and everything going forward, really, because she's been awesome in her comeback appearances. But why Charlotte? Well, it kind of came to life on last night. SmackDown, and this is kind of just putting two and two together. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't from Saturn. It's, we saw Charlotte lose to Ember Moon in like 30 seconds due to a distraction roll up. Afterwards, she cut a quite fiery backstage promo in which she was kind of like, who are these idiots? I should be on the SummerSlam card. I'm the queen. Uh, it's a disgrace that I'm not on the card. And at SummerSlam, I'm going to face someone bigger than Ember Moon and Bailey. She also tweeted after the show saying uh, a picture of herself accompanied with the queen of all eras of women's wrestling. Two plus two equals Trish. I'm, I'm really, really excited about this. I was terrified that they were going to be like, I'm going to be fighting Naomi. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this makes Sonya. complete sense, obviously with the location and with the opponent and just, oh, just all coming together. This is one of those fantastic matches that doesn't need any storyline whatsoever. I'm sure they can probably knock something together in the next couple of weeks, but just Trish Charlotte, Shut up and take my money. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Ida versus Ira, one of the greatest of all time against one of the greatest of all time, really. Charlotte Flair absolutely rules. Can't wait to see how this goes down. Can't wait to see Trish back on TV. Yeah, well. and hopefully if this goes well, I'd like to see some sort of long-term build against between Trish and someone else at maybe like a WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Like that'd be a great, like, if we can have like a random chuck together Batista Triple H match, why not have Trish slowly build to a feud with someone at WrestleMania? I totally agree. We need to see Batista versus Trish at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's continue talking about SummerSlam because three new matches were added to the card last night following uh, SmackDown Live. Uh, Kofi Kingston challenged Randy Orton, so it is going to be Randy versus Kofi for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. Bray Wyatt, or technically The Fiend, is going to be wrestling his first match in just about a year when he goes head-to-head -head with Finn Balor at SummerSlam. And yes, it's going to be Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens with Kevin Owens' career, or job, I think, actually, not career, job on the line. Interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. And all these builds make sense. The Kofi Randy stuff was awesome. Yes. Calling back to that Madison Square Garden stuff 10 years ago. They Brilliant, remembered beautiful. it. So good. So, so good. Um, Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens makes all the sense in the world and is in line with what we've been told with regarding Shane getting booted off television by KO. So maybe they'll make it like a loser yeah. leaves town. He'll kind slowly of bait him into putting his job or role or whatever yeah. is on the line. Yeah, it'll be really good. And last night's segments and matches were great. They really like, I love the Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens versus the Authority stuff. It's fantastic stuff. And the last match came together really well as well. Oh, Finn yeah. Balor cutting a promo. Uh, Bray Wyatt appears in full Firefly Funhouse He's garb. And then full the Mr. Fiend. Rogers. Yeah. Hello, you're great, you are. Oh, yeah, anyway, oh, yeah. my friend's going to kill you. Yeah, the Fiend's like growling, let me in. in a silly oh, voice. I love it. Get in my goddamn vein. Shall we talk about the new AEW match as Yes, well, there is another match that's been added to all, uh, AEW's All Out, which obviously takes place at the end of August, and it's a triple threat. And yet again on today's news, <laughs> shut up and take my money. It is Joey Janela versus Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc in a triple threat match. 
Ooh, there's going to be some stuff in this. They're, they're going to bump each other to death. Oh, 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 the, the booking of this match is really brilliant as well, because at Fight for the Fallen, these three, uh, they were in a trios match. They were against Sean Spears, uh, MJF. Uh, and, and who, the, who the hell was the other guy? Doesn't matter, either way, they lost. Uh, the finish came when um, Jimmy Havoc was looking all right, Darby Allin tagged himself in and got his ass beat. So basically, they're arguing backstage, they're brawling, gets a bit carried away. Obviously, Havoc and Allin have a bone to pick with each other, having cost each other the match. And Joey Janela chimes in with, hey, you bellends, I waited 14 years for this contract and now I'm 0-2 because of you. So basically, it's a match that came together because they lost, they blame each other, they're not happy. It's simple, it's effective, it's everything I want from AEW. They're not feuding over someone trashing someone else's car or spilling stealing coffee. A, yeah, spilling coffee or stealing a girlfriend. It's pro wrestling. It's basic, it's simple. It's what the sport should be. Love Good it. Good stuff. But the WWE stuff was great as well. Yeah. Bias. Yeah. Let's talk about the Raw Reunion. Let's talk about the Raw Reunion. The rating. WWE popped a good number, as expected. Bringing 40 names back from the past, it would have been quite the failure if they didn't pop a good number. So the viewership went up to 3.09 million on average, uh, up from the previous week of 2.45 million. So hour one, 3.02. Uh, million, hour two, 3.18 million, hour three, 3.08 million. Good number, good step forward. However, little bit of cold water on this. Raw 25 last year did 4.53 million. Oof. So the spike isn't as dramatic. It should be celebrated, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously the truer test will be seeing whether or not WWE can continue with this kind of number going forward now that, you know, with regular programming, no, not that's, that's it. nostalgia That's special. it, we've solved the problem with ratings. All we need to do is bring back 40 <laughs> legends every single week for the rest of time. Different, different legends every single week as well. So they'll be scraping the bottom. Oh, okay, so... Well, Dwayne well, Gill! Sc sorry, scraping the bottom about all more than Alicia Fox. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Someone said, oh, no, she's just part of the backstage, you know, she's part of the current roster, that was it. No, 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 she was on the t-shirt the thing that they made, <laughs> yep. like, front and centre. <laughs> Look, Alicia Fox is going to be there. Oh, good, I hope you like hat stuff. <laughs> think that was a rib do you think they were like hey legend. <laughs> yeah legend like taking the mic she's barely ever here pal just take the piss hey i suppose technically when you're a, a survivor series winning team captain you're automatically a legend that's the rule shouts to the captain uh right let's move on because we've got an update on the oc california not that one i'm still gonna do that joke every time because it pops me uh the, the the new version of the bullet club of course uh, on the, in the WWE, AJ Styles, uh, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson, and speculation about a potential new member because AJ Styles, when promoting the uh, Raw reunion during an interview with The Rap, discussed the possibility of Finn Balor coming on board. It's what we all want to see. Balor's probably going to take a couple of months off after SummerSlam, but after that, He's got to be joining them, hasn't he? He says, I mean, we'll have to see where he stands. We're not exactly liked right now. Does he want to be not liked? I don't know. I don't know where it's going to stand. He will always have an invitation, but who knows if it's going to happen, which means I'm here to report it's definitely going to happen <laughs> in about probably October, I'd say. It makes all the sense in the world again, oh. doesn't it? Like, uh, Finn Balor can get battered by The Fiend at SummerSlam. He can take one hell of a shellacking. He can come back two months later refreshed, revived, and with new focus. I love it. I want to see Finn Balor, uh, heel Balor. I wanted to see it from the day he walked in, and I think it will rule. I tell you what, if this is the news on a hump day, hump me every day, because there's some bloody good stuff today. Good grief. <laughs> a bit of speculation of our own. Um, after that. Sorry, what, not to throw you. What, what, does the, what does the OC stand for? Like, what, the, what do you reckon? The original club. Original club, yeah. only club. I yeah. thought it stood for oily c Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Let's talk more about the Royal Reunion. Shoot season as well is back open. Pew, oh. pew, 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 pew. It's, nev it's never been closed. It really hasn't. Sami Zayn has been popping off on Twitter, uh, unleashing both, unloading, I should say, both barrels on the Royal Reunion. He said the following last night. Hashtag Royal Reunion was a joke. If I'm still hanging on to this business years after I'm done this business, you can punch me in the face. <laughs> Like most great artists, I am vastly underappreciated in my own time. You have me now and you're blowing it. Too busy missing glory days that actually sucked. Mmm, spicy. Just push him. For God's Please. sake, he's brilliant. And obviously, yes, this is not actually him going against the company. I'm sure he got that cleared by everyone. But... Do we not understand that this is the one, like I said he should have been Money in the Bank winner. When he came back after WrestleMania, I was like, well, give this guy everything because he's brilliant. And they 
made him lose and made him lose and made him lose. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you rehabilitate the character quickly, but he's just the best. Yeah. Just like get him in the ti a title picture because he has great matches. He's fantastic on the mic and ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, great tweet, great rant, great promo, great work shoot thing. Great Love guy. Sammy Zane. Great guy, Sammy for Syria, support. Yeah. Nothing just but good two, things. Yeah, that's the problem. He does nice things. This, this is it. That's not part of the Benevolent company. fund, is it? Mmm, jobber. <laughs> right, an update now on a new potential FS1 show that's going to be starting uh, on Fox when SmackDown moves there in October. We may have just learned its name. Do you want to know what this called? No. I think it's all right, actually, this, considering the rocky history okay. that WWE has with names. It's just going to be called, apparently, they, they filed a trademark for WWE After The Bell. Good. Fine. Good. Don't overcomplicate stuff. Uh, it's going to be a mixture of analysis, discussion, all the stuff you'd usually expect, of course. Uh, it's going to be hosted uh, by Renee Young. Good. It, it's going to air Tuesday nights, potentially opposite of debuting AEW, although we possibly suspect that that's probably going to be Wednesday nights. And it's rumoured that Jerry the King Lawler could oh. be involved with it as well. Well, it sounded good until that point. Um, <laughs> no, it could oh, be you fun. ruined it. <laughs> it. It could be fun. I mean, Talking Smack ruled. Obviously, the performers who were on that won't have the same level of control that Renee and Daniel Bryan and their wacky mm. array of guests had. But no, I'm, I'm here for a studio analysis show. It'll make it feel like more of a real sport and less like a goofy pantomime. And don't get me wrong, I love the goofy pantomime, but WWE could really do with that kind of dose of reality mm. every now and then. I'd love to see it play out. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Don't forget you can send them to us at WhatCultureWWE. But the first question is a two-parter. Whoa! He's really got his money's That's worth. Cheap. Tom Lake in here, who says, do you think that Foley should be a special guest referee for Bray versus Finn at SummerSlam because of what happened on Raw? Ooh, I think it makes sense within the storyline. However, I would prefer a straight singles match and I would prefer it to be a squash as well, yeah, honestly. I completely agree with everything you just said. Uh, and he says, should a stipulation be added to KO versus Shane? For example, it becoming, and I like this, an I quit match. Oh my goodness, yes, that would be very good. A very, very good, great idea, because it would obviously the loser would be buggering off for a while. Um, my worry is with these gimmick matches, they do tend to stretch out. The trope does yeah. tend to get worn out throughout the course of them. So I'd be wary, but no, it's it's a great idea. I'd have an I quit match and either have it so that uh, Shane wins, but only wins after uh, saying I quit, but he sweats so much on the microphone, it's shorted, and then it finally just gets his goobers to help him, <laughs> come in and help him. Or just have Kevin Owens just dies. destroy him and not ask him if he wants to quit for like 15 minutes, like torture him to the point where he's just like, please, for God's sake, like he's <laughs> looking for the microphone. Do that. Don't do your usual tropes. Don't have, ask him referee, ask him, it's yeah, rubbish. Don't make it out. 30 minutes long. No. Uh, Richard McLarlan asks us, who do you see the crowd at SummerSlam cheering for in the Becky versus Natalia match? Would a Canadian crowd cheer the oh, man, man over one of their own? That's a really interesting dynamic, isn't it? Because obviously, naturally, you would say Becky because she's the star. and. Natalia's just kind of been like a mid-carder for, de well, like over a decade or whatever. Um, man, I don't know. I think it's hard to imagine Becky getting booed, mm. put it that way, because she's Becky Lynch. But, I don't know, maybe with Natalia playing more of a, a heel-ish character, she'll get the entrance pop, obviously, mm. and they'll be into the match. But yeah, because they'll go, oh, Bret Hart's on us. Ah, it's Natalia. Natalia. Uh, it might wear off a little bit as the match goes on. Yeah, I, I do like the way they've built this, to be fair. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have a lot of hope for it at the beginning, and they've done some, done, done some good stuff. Uh, right, final question today comes from Jason Kesey, who says, OK, hear me out. <laughs> what if WWE is going to have the rest of the unused roster finally revolt against the main event talent, thereby proclaiming the beginning, beginning of the new Attitude Era and getting away from the crappy storylines going oh, on? Oh, I mean, it's a dream scenario for many, many people. However, I don't think in a million years it will happen. The Attitude Era was the perfect uh, presentation for the perfect period of time. However, society and the world and entertainment as a whole has moved on from that. It wouldn't work in 2019. I'll, I'll just... Like, you know, I'll say that unequivocally. A, a new attitude era might spike ratings for a little while, but it would not produce the long-term boost that WWE want. It would uh, send families away with young young viewers. It would send sponsors away. It would not work. Twenty nine. It's twenty nineteen. Mm. It's twenty years later. It's not. It doesn't need to be this tough, gritty, edgy, puerile thing anymore. That being said, PG has obviously this era has many many problems mm -hmm. that. It's understandable that people want to return to... What know, about the attitude era? ...to that. But I don't think it's the answer. I don't think it would work. I think it would be a disaster, in fact. Yeah. 
what, what he said. Right, let's move on to today's and finally, and it's less something silly and funny today, and just some bloody great news if you're a wrestling fan. Hey. Because uh, Viceland has renewed its pro wrestling docuseries, Dark Side of the Ring. We're going to get a season two of what was a fantastic docuseries. I interviewed uh, the director and the producer, lovely bunch of lads. It's, fa it's a fascinating chat with them, actually. Make sure you go and check that out uh, by searching for What Culture Wrestling on either Spotify or iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from. But the even better news, not only are we getting season two, uh, it says season two of the series will have almost double the initial episode order with 10 hour-long examinations of the collision of fantasy and wrestling and the stars larger than life characters in and out of the ring. Brilliant news, this. Yeah, this is great. This is really fantastic because the first season was tremendous stuff. Um, watch the Bruiser Brody one and tell me you don't want to watch the rest. Yeah, the Bruiser Brody one, the Von Erich episode oh, as well, yeah. was really, really good. I mean, there were some episodes like the Montreal Screwjob, if you're a wrestling historian mm. or a nerd like us, yeah. you may not have learned all that much. But it's still cool to hear these accounts from the people who are close to the situation. I'm over the moon about this. It's a great era for wrestling documentaries, actually. The wrestlers... Another Vice series presented by the singer of, uh, I can't say the band's name, Effed Up. Uh, it's another really great series. Travels the world, goes and looks at all these marginalized local scenes. If you're a wrestling nerd, this is a great time to have access to Vice, I guess. Yeah, fantastic news. Can't Make sure wait. Go and check out season one. Season two is going to be probably even better. Right, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can send us Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow him at Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Hurst. You can follow me at Adam Wilmore. You can follow us all at What Culture WWE. And make sure you check out What Culture Wrestling's podcast by searching for What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts. Right, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching. Good news day, everyone. Very good. We Very good. We'll see you soon. 300K. <laughs>